let me introduce you to the country of Namibia. Namibia is located on the southwest coast of Africa. It's bordered on the north by Angola, to the west by Botswana, and to the south by South Africa. A prominent panhandle, the Caprivi Strip, gives the country access to the Zambezi River. The Tropic of Capricorn runs through roughly the middle of the country, making Namibia mostly a subtropical arid country spanning a variety of habitats. These range from the hyper-arid Namib Desert, to semi-arid and arid savannas, to the biodiversity hotspots of the succulent Karoo. Namibia contains no permanent rivers within its boundaries, but rather several ephemeral rivers that flow during the rainy season west into the Atlantic Ocean. Namibia's permanent rivers are shared with other countries and include the river ecosystems of the Orange, Kuneni, and Zambezi rivers. The country covers an area roughly half the size of the state of Alaska, with a population of a little over two million people, heavily weighted to the young end of the demographic spectrum. Namibia is ethnically and culturally diverse. Most of the population is culturally Bantu, with the Avambo tribe, concentrated mostly in the far north of the country, representing a small majority. A close second are the Herero, followed by several smaller Bantu groups like the nomadic Himba. In the west are the San-related Nama and Damara, the hunter-gatherer San, or Bushmen in the east, as well as German and Afrikaans families that have settled in the country since the 19th century, first when the country was terra incognita for Europeans, then as a German colony, and after World War I as a protectorate of South Africa until its independence in 1990. Namibia is still a fairly wild country. It contains the world's largest and most genetically diverse population of cheetahs. Wild game is abundant on the country's arid savannas. Lions, elephants, and rhinoceros roam along the country's linear oases that parallel the country's ephemeral rivers. The coast has an abundant fishery, which includes diverse bird life and one of the world's largest breeding colonies of Cape fur seals. In the south, along the Orange River, is one of the world's most remarkable biodiversity hotspots, the succulent Karoo, a fog desert which contains thousands of unique species of succulent plants. Many of these, like Hoodia, have potential medicinal value. The country's desert ecosystems range from the immense dune sea of the southern Namib, to mountainous Inselberga, rising from the hyper-arid deserts of the coast, to the sandy grasslands of the Kalahari. In the northeast are the tropical woodlands of the Zambezi Valley, with hippopotamus and crocodiles roaming the rivers. The country is host to three World Heritage Sites. In the northwest are the remarkable petroglyphs of Teufelfontein. In the north is the immense Atasha Pan. And in the west, the coastal lagoons of Sandwich Harbor. Namibia is a fairly prosperous country, with a per capita income of roughly $6,000. Its economy is strongly based upon natural resources, with agriculture, fisheries, and mining as its mainstays. The country's incredible natural wealth also supports a robust ecotourism industry. It has inherited a well-developed infrastructure of roads, telecommunications, banking, and commerce, which continues to grow. Namibia's government is strongly committed to economic growth and to avoiding the mistakes that have hobbled so many other African countries, like the rampant corruption that is the plague of Africa. It is an African country that can realistically envision a bright future for itself. Protection of natural resources is a constitutional mandate in Namibia. This presents some interesting challenges in the context of a developing country. There are fundamental philosophical issues in nature conservation. What is the proper balance between exploitation and preservation? There's the practical matter of simply cataloging the country's immense biodiversity. Land use issues are ongoing, especially in reconciling the commercial versus the traditional communal traditions of agriculture and resource utilization. Being an arid country, water use and hydrology are significant and ongoing concerns. The country sits on an enormous potential wealth of natural products. In short, Namibia is grappling with many of the issues that form the core of ESF's mission, and this makes the country a natural partner in the development of ESF's international programs. And Namibia is one of the few places left in the world that is making a relatively fresh start on these issues, and where the expertise that ESF represents could play a major role in making Namibia an African country with a bright future.